Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I have a review roundup talking about mostly new releases. I have a couple products in here that are not new, but for the most part, most of these are relatively new releases. I'll kind of share with you guys which ones are the best and the worst. And these are all products that I've shared either on my YouTube or Instagram already, and I've had a ton of requests to review these products specifically, which was why I figured I would just kind of throw them all together in one video so we have one convenient place for everything. But in today's video, you'll be hearing reviews on the new holiday palette from Ofra. A lot of you guys are asking me what I think of this. This is their signature palette, and it has five of their highlighters in it, as well as the color depositing masks from Moroccan Oil. You guys have been leaving me so many questions about these, so I'm going to answer all of them in today's video. This is the product that made my hair this brown color that seems to look red on camera, but is very much brown in real life. You guys have been asking me so much about these face halos, what I think, what do I recommend, and I have a few other products in here as well, so why don't we go ahead and hop into it. All right, you guys, we're gonna start off on a bit of a negative note with my least favorite product in the video, so if this is my best and worst new makeup releases, this one is the worst for me. And it's a bummer because I really wanted to love this. This is the Petal to the Metal palette from The Balm. This is their Shift into Neutral palette. So they have a Shift into Neutral, which is somewhat more neutral. I don't think this is super neutral. You still have like the purples in there. They also have Shift into Overdrive, which is a bit more colorful. I will say on the eyes, a lot of these colors show up more muted. And part of the reason for me that this was kind of a dud is because this formula is just very, very sheer. So I do think there's still an audience for this palette, and I'll kind of get into that in a second. But the reason that it disappointed me is that, first of all, these don't show up necessarily the color that they are in the pan, which is fine. That's not always the case with eyeshadows. But let me show you this one up here. This is Luxury, and that's the color that it is on the skin. And as you try to blend these out and work them into the skin, that's when they really sheer up. So maybe if you just kind of apply it right away and you don't really do any blending in, you might be able to save some of that pigmentation. But once, if you want them to look blended on the skin, they're going to kind of fade away into nothing. And also, because this is a cream formula, they're not really buildable. So don't expect to use this palette and do like an intricate eye look with a lot of different colors and a lot of dimension because they're not going to layer well on top of each other. They just kind of disappear when you start doing that. And because they're very emollient creamy shadows and they're just really creamy and almost wet to the touch, they kind of like morph together in a funny way when you do use multiple shades and they kind of it's like they even disappear in certain spots on the eyes the way that i found that i do actually enjoy using this is that as an eyeshadow base which i did mention in another video that i wanted to try it as that and that's actually what i did today i used this color shift as the eyeshadow base on my lid to really amplify the silver and then i took the shade sport as the base on my inner corner to amplify that so if you have this palette or you have other cream palettes and you're not necessarily enjoying the formula of them but you want to find a way to use them that could be a route to go however i don't necessarily recommend buying this just to use as a base because you could use other bases that aren't an entire palette but the person that i think this is well suited towards is someone who maybe wants this palette to wear every day to work you just want to pop one color on the lid apply it really easily with your finger i've done that let me like this shade right here mini i wore that out one day this is pretty soft on its own it doesn't show up that orange color once you work it into the eyes it just has like a slight tint plus some glitter but if that's your everyday look and you just want a one shadow look that you can just apply with the finger tap out you might enjoy this formula but i think for the average person i would actually recommend their powder eyeshadow formula over this their powder eyeshadows are not my number one favorite formula but i do think they're very beginner friendly and easy to work with so i would recommend those from the balm over these cream shadows all right, let's talk about these face halos. This is one of the products in the video that's not necessarily new, but so many of you requested my feedback on it that I wanted to share. So Face Halo actually sent me along this set. It comes with three face halos. And if you've never heard of this brand, it's kind of like the Makeup Eraser or some other brands release similar products. But basically this little circle pad is supposed to be able to remove all of your makeup with just water. So. First, when you receive these, you're supposed to wash them, but then uh, the first time that you use them, or any time that you use them really, you just get it wet under water, and then just start using circular motions around the skin, and this is supposed to be able to remove all of your makeup. 
Now, I was actually pretty surprised at how effective this was. I was very skeptical because, I mean, just think, a washcloth will kind of remove a good amount of your makeup, but I wouldn't trust a washcloth on its own to remove everything. But this, I found, actually did a pretty good job. Now, that being said, I would still really hesitate to recommend this as your only form of cleanse and your only form of makeup removal. I would say if you are into the double cleanse method, which I personally am, maybe you could utilize this as your first cleanse and then still go in with some sort of a face wash afterwards to really actually cleanse the skin and also make sure that you removed everything properly. Personally, these have not made their way into my everyday skincare routine. I'm just so committed to my double cleanse. I just prefer to use an oil cleanser first and then a gel because that is what I feel really takes all the makeup off and leaves my skin really clear. I meant to say clean, not clear. I'm distracted by my cat doing something naughty over here. But the reason that I like these and I'm going to keep them is because I think they're great for days when you are feeling a little bit lazy. So when I'm at home, my skincare routine is like really an element of self-care for me and something that I look forward to doing. But sometimes if I'm at a friend's house or I'm out of town for the weekend, I, that's when I'm the laziest. That's when I'm like craving a makeup remover wipe even though I don't use those. So that's a scenario when I would pack one of these face halos and that's what I have used them for. So I like them for travel. Also maybe if you've had a late night doing some adult things. That sounds totally not the way that I mean for it to sound, but if you've been going out and you come home and you're not in the mood to wash your face, I think these are a nice backup to have. I think it's kind of a cool product to have in your routine. And I also think these would make a nice replacement for someone who's really married to makeup remover wipes. And I mentioned that once in a different video, but if you are just such a diehard for your makeup remover wipes, you don't want to like be in the sink cleansing your face, you just want something that's really effortless to rub across and remove the product, I think this could be a nice alternative for you because first of all, it's just less wasteful of course, but also after a couple months, these will pay for themselves when you think about how many makeup remover wipes you will no longer be purchasing. Now they do come in a pack of three, you might need to buy backups depending on how many days a week you wear makeup or need to use these. I wouldn't recommend using them over and over again. Maybe you can use like one side one day and the other side, but I wouldn't go any more than that without washing in between. If you were interested and think it's something that would fit into your routine, I would actually really recommend them. This next product is pretty new. This is the Ultimate Brush Set and Go Off from Urban Decay. And I'm wearing the shade Fair, and I say I'm wearing, because actually I'm wearing this today. But they have five shades in total. They even have a translucent shade. So they, I do like that they kind of tailored it towards different skin tones. Now, let me start off sharing two kind of petty pet peeves that I have about this. The first one is just that it's too bulky. This little brush that it comes with is cute in theory, but I don't know. I would have just preferred that it was in a regular powder format and had a sifter because it is the largest powder in my collection by far. But if you haven't seen the packaging yet, you have two options to open it and remove product. You can open this side and open up a brush. Now, for me with the brush, I find that it's a little bit too dense to really brush across the skin. I find that I can only stipple and push it into the skin because if I'm brushing, I don't like the finish that it gives just because this is so stiff, it kind of moves product around. But if you just want to get down into the product, maybe to dip a sponge in, or to dip a brush in, it does twist off. I wish they would have just done it like this and put a lid on it and that's the whole product. My other pet peeve is that this is an expensive high-end product and I've only had it for a month and the writing is chipping off quite noticeably. So that's kind of a disappointment. The packaging feels really drugstore to me, which is a bummer because the actual product is quite nice. I think if you have oily skin, I think you would enjoy this, but if you have oily skin and you've tried this, confirm for me down below how it worked for you because I have dry skin, so I'm just kind of sharing what I would assume would work, but I find this is a bit of a heavier powder, but it doesn't look necessarily heavy on the skin. So for me, if I really diffuse it and dust it into the skin with a really fluffy brush, I don't find that it looks too heavy, but it still really locks my makeup in. 
If you have dry skin, I would really only recommend applying it with that method of really lightly dusting it over the skin because I think a little bit can go a long way and can be quite heavy, but I find that this is very effective for locking products into the skin. I find that it's one I've been reaching for when I want to make sure that my makeup's gonna last the entire day. And I also use it sometimes as a finishing powder. Now, I think the translucent version would probably be more effective as this because the fair one that I have is technically colored and it does leave a little bit of color or pigment on the skin I guess but I still do use it as a finishing powder sometimes and again take a fluffy brush and dust it over my blush or bronzer after I've already completed them to help soften the edges and I find that this is really good with softening up edges and helping everything just look really airbrushed all right, you guys have been asking me all of the questions about the new Moroccan Oil Color Depositing Masks. So Moroccan Oil did send over all of the shades to me and they sent them in the minis. You can purchase this in two different sizes. This mini is $7 and it comes with one fluid ounce of product. This was enough for me to do my entire head of hair. I have a lot of hair. Uh, it is a little bit shorter these days. I think if I still had my longer hair that was like down to my stomach, I don't know if one packet would have been enough. But if you want a larger version, they do sell that for $28, which is the full size. This comes in so many colors though. The one I was holding up was champagne, but you also have rose gold, you have aquamarine, you have like a deeper red, you have a platinum. The shade that I have in my hair is the shade Coco. Now I'm going to try to take a photo and insert it on the screen because I don't think that this hair color translates on camera to what it looks like in person because whenever I'm editing my footage, I'm like, why does my hair have such a bold red tint to it? Because in real life, it is more of a neutral, brown i was gonna say too cool that's probably not true i would say just a neutral brown is what it looks like in person which is really weird to me though because normally i feel like i have my camera settings and my lighting adjusted to uh, a setting that accurately depicts most colors like i'm really happy with my lighting and setup so it's weird to me that my hair looks so red in here and it doesn't in person but I did use the shade Coco. However, I did mix in a tiny bit of champagne because I wanted to add some warmth to it. It's hard to say if this even made a noticeable difference though, to be honest, but there is a certain way that I would recommend applying this product. So actually, let me back up and tell you a little bit more about what it is because if you didn't hear me talking about it in other videos, you might be confused. So it's a color depositing mask, that's the name of it, but it's supposed to be a deep conditioning treatment that will temporarily dye, and I'm using dye in quotes, but temporarily dye your hair. It's supposed to be um, very gentle and actually nourishing on your hair versus sometimes processing hair and changing the color can damage it. This is not supposed to damage it at all. And they say that it washes out in a few washes. I do think that varies based on the color. I will say that I've washed my hair once since applying it and I feel like it's basically the same color, maybe a touch lighter, but not really. However, I will mention that I was looking at the reviews of this on Sephora and I noticed everyone that reviewed the aquamarine color, I'm using everyone, I'm exaggerating to say everyone, but a lot of people that reviewed this tone said that it stayed in their hair for a very long time. Like I had a lot of people I was reading that gave it like one star or none because they're like, the blue will not come out of my hair. So something to make note of if you wanted to try that color, I'm not sure how quickly that would come out. And those reviews have really scared me away from wanting to try the blue. But I do think it's a really cool concept if you want to temporarily change your hair color. I know Halloween is um, among us. I think this video is gonna go up before Halloween. So this could be a last minute thing to run on by if you wanna have pink hair for the holiday. Now, there is a certain way that I would recommend applying this. I would not just go into your shower after you've shampooed and just apply it like you would a conditioner because I don't think that you will get an even application with it. So what I did is I applied this as if I was actually dyeing my hair. So I have a little hair dyeing bowl. Well, I'll just grab it. So this is the bowl. I bought it at Sally's a long time ago. I use it when I highlight my hair. And same thing with this brush, again, from Sally's. I applied it with this so I could get an even application and I also wore gloves. These are just reusable rubber gloves, again, from Sally's that I use when I do my hair. And I don't think these three products are 100% necessary, but I would actually recommend them. So even if you're, if you're not gonna use a brush in a little bowl like this to pick up the color with, I would still recommend sectioning the hair off so that it applies very evenly because if you just plop a glob of it into your hand and run it through your hair, you're not gonna get an even application and I really don't think you're gonna like the result. And it probably will stay in your hands just based on 
my in focus there we go just based on the amount of product that was like dripping down onto the rest of me while i was doing it i had to like get rid of that right away or it would stain i had a spot drip onto my countertop i have white countertops and i feel like i didn't clean it up fast enough and it kind of left a mark i've kind of gotten it off by now but i would just be very cautious especially if you're using the darker colors they say to leave it on five to seven minutes i think i was more like eight to ten just because i wanted it to show up more now there's one thing i really think is important to note and let me grab this out this is what came in the pr kit now this is on their website also so i would recommend checking this out before you purchase a color they have a graphic of which tones will work on which types of hair so i would say you have to be careful because if you have brown hair and you go out and buy the rose gold it's not really going to show up so they only recommend like the rose gold if your hair is between light blonde and medium blonde and then some of the darker shades like the ones that i used cocoa or also this deeper red called bordeaux they only recommend those if you have like brown hair they don't really recommend those on blonde hair which for me that was hard for me because i was like i don't know if you would consider my hair medium blonde or light brown i was right in between the two so i kind of took a chance doing the darker color but I would check out this chart first to see if you would even get results based on your hair color. But overall, I really like these. I want to check back in with you guys once I figure out the fade time because so far I haven't noticed much fading. But I wanted to share these thoughts now because I've been getting so many questions about them. So I will leave it linked down below just like everything else in this video. Next is a mascara and this is the Ciate London Wonderland Mascara and I used this in my most recent Get Ready With Me. It's kind of been my go-to mascara recently and I wanted to share my thoughts on it. And this... I would say is my second least favorite thing in the video, but not because it's bad, honestly, just because everything else in this video was so good for me. So this is my least favorite. This is probably my second least favorite. And I do like this mascara, and I think if you're not as picky about mascara as I am, you would probably really enjoy this. So the reason I don't like it is because you guys already know, I like to build my mascara for days. So if I have a mascara that's gonna clump as I'm building it, it's not for me. And that's what I find with this formula. I d also don't know that it necessarily curls or helps keep my lashes curled, which is not a top priority to me, but if it is to you, I find that this kind of leaves my lashes a little bit straight. Some days I feel like I have good lash days with this and some days I don't, but I still don't know that it's my favorite, especially for the high-end price tag of it. The packaging though is 10 out of 10. It's very heavy, it looks luxe. If you can see on camera, it has little stars on it this texture is actually raised so it's really high-end classy luxurious packaging but the result for me i feel like this is a good mascara but at the drugstore there are great mascaras so it's whoops my camera stopped recording but it's hard for me to splurge unless a mascara is like mind-blowingly good and for me this one is just pretty good and finally, this holiday palette from Ofra. This is their signature palette. It's their hashtag Ofra Glow Palette. And you have five mini versions of their famous highlighters. And you have the shades Star, no, Star Island, Rodeo Drive, Bali, Pillow Talk, and Blissful. And these are all minis, but I will say with the Ofra formula, a little bit goes a long way. So I think a mini would actually probably last for quite a while. So this retails for $32 on Ulta's website, and I actually think this is something I would highly recommend if you've been wanting to try Ofra's highlighter formula and you think that these shades would work for you. Now, from my skin tone, I can use these two shades and this one, which are Star Island, Rodeo Drive, and Pillow Talk. Blissful and Bali are a little bit dark for me, especially Bali. I'll never be able to use that on its own, but I have used it as like a blush topper or mixed it in. So I would say this is probably best suited, quite honestly, to a light medium skin tone. I think if you are much lighter than I am, you might only get use out of these two shades. But if you are very deep, you might only get use out of Bali. But the good thing about having five shades in here is you can kind of mix and match. So even if these shades individually aren't perfect for you, you can kind of deepen or lighten them by dipping into others. I find this formula to be the exact same as other Ofra products. Another thing I like about this it's very sleek, which Ofra doesn't usually do. Ofra usually has pretty bulky products, which is always a pet peeve of mine. This is their normal highlighter size, and you can see the palette is quite 
uh, a bit thinner, which I appreciate. It's nice, it's sleek. The white packaging can get a little bit dirty, but I think if you've had your eye on this, especially if you like the Ofra highlighter formula, I would pick it up. I've been using this almost every day. Like I can't stop reaching for it. So those were follow-up reviews on a few products you guys have been requesting that I get back to you on. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye.